The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Media Mash, a roundtable of Cowboys insiders dropping wisdom and offering sizzling takes on the current state of your Dallas Cowboys. Now, your host, Nui Scruggs. Thursday, Media Mash coming your way from the SWBC Podcast Studios. This is the home world headquarters of the Dallas Cowboys, and our roundtable includes the author, Jean-Jacques Taylor, former Cowboy beat writer. We've got the Hall of Famer. He is Ed Werder in the house. And all city Dallas, the longest tenured beat writer now? Yeah, or, always. Always? Still. Still here. Still. Still. still and I just want to know, we, we talk about the pettiness of this show. What did you put on Facebook? Most trusted. Yeah, I, I did. I put that out there. Um, <laughs> anybody anybody want to argue about that? You can argue all day. That's why it's called marketing. You know, it's like Hope. It's like Avis. Just like everybody, everybody going to argue. Everybody going to market their product. You and Trump. Y'all say whatever y'all want no, to. No, I, I, market your product. Is, is Channel 8 the best station or is Channel 5? I just know where my check comes okay, from. Exactly. My check. And, you know, I'm just I saying, who's who the best station? I mean, we all, we all do that. It don't matter to me what you think. I know my check. Exactly. So it's funny, we're talking about the pettiness as we continue with the pettiness on this show. It's not pettiness. I was just bringing up the, the your claim to pe- fame. Pettiness on this show. Yeah. Our producer took a shot right before the show. Oh, it was a joke. Joke, shot, same we family. Start, we, we same we, we family, gotta, right? We Did you take a shot? The, we got to start the show off with your beefs. I don't have a beef. I don't have your, a beef with anyone. Thing. It's mean, not personal. Let's just start. And it wasn't even about me. Get but it it's out. okay. Get it all out. Get it all out. He said we should be sponsored by LinkedIn. I'm trying to figure out what's he talking about. Because <laughs> everybody People got looking different for jobs. jobs. <laughs> I didn't think that was a shot. I thought it was a bit of humor. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Humor can be wrapped in a shot. Can be wrapped. Many, <laughs> hey, many truths are told in jest. Hey man, I didn't with Roy Williams. Have Dan's you changed Brian. your LinkedIn profile yet? That's my question. <laughs> I have not uh, adjusted my does it, LinkedIn. Does it I've still say Star Telegram? Yes, so there you go. I need to change my LinkedIn profile. Yeah, stop living in the past. Come on. All right, locker room happened today. Let's start with your client, Dak Prescott. What do you got? Wow. Your client. Now, that was a shot. You see what I'm saying? It's just now, the, that's a shot, yes. I mean, it's just the, the pettiness. It's, it's crazy. I walked up there. You see, uh, just for the record, everybody's had clients over the years. I, Quincy Carter was a client of mine. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Darren Woodson was a client of mine. I mean, everybody's had clients over. You gonna start claiming people here? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. This was uh, Jimmy Johnson's client. Jimmy Johnson, Ed, 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 Jimmy Johnson Ed, Ed, of yours. Jimmy John, Mr. Mr. Jimmy Johnson Mr. stuck Mr. his finger in my chest and said, "You have had your last interview with me." Mr. Mr. I used to what live. What about Ed no, Warner? Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. How about T.O.? No, Mr. I used to live at Brett Favre's house. Brett Favre's coming in right now. Brett Favre. Brett Favre was a client. Helicopter did. Mr. Mr. Brett Favre retirement. Uh, guy, Brett, hey. Brett Favre was in, was much high, more highly regarded when he was with me than he is currently. It's been, a, it's been a precipitous fall. <laughs> that's, that's, this, is, that's, this could happen to you, Clarence. This any, is all we say. Any, anyway, uh, Deion Sanders been a client. I, mean, yeah. you know, I had no, Tim Tebow. No, anybody I, want to brag about that? There you go. Uh, uh, in Dak Hill Court today, and, and actually Dak and City, I thought it was funny. You know, and we we've talked about it before. The the whole brouhaha at the end of the half. You know, when when Dak threw the interception and. And people saw CD mouthing words, and I think it, to me it was started by Chris Collins' words. I'm not a, you know, lip reader, but if you want to read some lips, <laughs> you know. And so people thought that CD was upset at Dak, and I think it go, really goes back to last year when when Dak CD's mom went after Dak after the playoff game. But you know, CD owes his career to Dak. I mean, his numbers have jumped, and it jumps with Dak on the field. You look at the last couple of years, and and the numbers he jumped. That contract. He has his credit to Dak feeding him the ball. So the idea that somehow Dak don't want to give see the ball, see I mean, the ball is crazy. I ain't gonna say the contract because of Dak. Okay, can I finish? I know what you ain't gonna say. I'm just saying. Jacques, let the most trusted beat by the speak, please. <laughs> He's arguing with this man with his guy. It's better on this issue. I'm sorry. Anyway, which one's yeah. his guy? I can't even tell. But uh, no, seriously, it, 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 he said jump ball, and I think it took a life of his own on, on the uh, radio. And both CD and Dak talked about. Hey, I said jump ball. You know, Dex, I, I made a mistake. CD wanted the ball in the back of the end zone. Smaller cornerback, throw the ball up. I can make the play. But it's, it was much ado about nothing. But it took a life of its own. You look on social media after the game on Monday, you know, people are writing stories about CD going off on Dak. And to me, that's part of the spotlight. You know, 
it's okay for receivers and quarterbacks or people to be on the sideline to have words. It's, it's a competitive environment. But let's not make up lies. No, nah, anybody who's seen CD when he's really mad knows he was not really mad at that. I mean, we didn't seen him suck and sit by himself and be in his whole thing. When in doubt, just go to the most trusted beat writer there is well, and ask how he interpreted it's, 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 it's so petty. it. That's what that's what Collinsworth should have done. Let me let me reach out to he the most have. trusted writer. He should have. Collinsworth can learn learn a few things about reading lips, especially these cowboys' body language. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> he can learn a few things. He gets petty out here. You lead the way, bro. It's, it's petty. Why out here. you sweat? Because it's hot and I got a pullover on like I'm a kid. Why you got a pullover on? Hoodie. Like, like, a, like I'm a kid. I got a hoodie on like I'm a kid. I like the colors. I like the outfit. I thought I was matching. And, you know, tight. I put it on. Tight. It's not tight. It's tight. Don't do it. Bro, it's Don't do it. Just, 88 I, degrees this outside. This sound look good. Tight. See, it the, good, man. You see, you see Chris over there so, taking shots so, again. So, uh, Ed. <laughs> That's my job. What'd you get from the locker room, Ed? From the locker room? <laughs> That's I'm going right. Well, it's, it's kind of unusual, and, and I mentioned odd to me that Ezekiel Elliott still has a day. He still has a media day that's where he addresses everyone in, in front of his locker, not out in the hallway. So he's not a marquee event anymore, but he is still a standalone interview, uh, to his credit. I mean, despite how little he's involved in the games. And asked him a couple questions about his role and the fact that he wasn't on the field in the situation where we all thought he should and would be down on the goal line, and how much different the questions of Mike McCarthy might have been had Dak Prescott not recovered Rico Dowdle's fumble. And Rico Dowdle fumbles in a situation where Zeke is on the team for that specific situation. Uh, I think I got a sense of, I think we all got a sense of how frustrated Zeke yes. is, but to his credit, he will not speak to that. He will not give voice to that. He'll just say, you should ask the coaches these questions. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been trying to ask these questions going back to training camp, getting his mindset of how to accept this role. He's been his lip. Last week I asked him, you know, why did they sign you? Why did they why did they protect you in training camp to not use you? And he he looked up and bit his lip. Today he was a little more open, even though he was still tight lipped about the situation. He acknowledged he's asked questions. You know, and, and I talked to his agent. He's asked the coaches about his role. You know, but he's not gonna push the envelope. He's trying to be a good teammate. He's been a good teammate. But he's wondering why I'm not being used, especially in that situation. I wrote a column today in, in all city of Dallas. Why is Zeke on the team? Why did you sign him if you're not going to use him on the goal line? I can understand Rico deserves to be the number one back based on what his run this year, but it's not about – it's about doing what's best for the team. You know, last year you struggled in the red zone. You struggled scoring rushing touchdowns. And you, we could talk all day about Zeke's decline and yardage and everything else, but he still has a nose for the end zone. Last time I was here in 2022 at 12 – Rushing touchdown. He can score from the one. Why was he not on the field? I asked Mike McCarthy the other day, yesterday, and I think he's tired of the running back question because he was very terse in his answer. The roles of the running back would not change this week. That's what was weird to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, why wouldn't he say, hey, that was almost a disaster down there. Right. Or say, We did bring Zeke back to be the short yardage goal line guy. And a baseball manager would have definitely put him in there. Right. You know, like, that's what they do. Like, like go, they're by the book. They don't care about Seven anything else. Go, right. Right. And, and uh, so you can imagine, I think, Zeke's frustration as a guy who's who won two rushing championships in the NFL early in his career, left here without an offer because Stephen Jones said he didn't want to insult an iconic figure. Right. And, and he does come back after a bad year. And nice being insulted. In New England. <laughs> and he's told, I assume he was told, here's your role. And he looks out there, the ball's on a one-yard line, the game's there to be won or lost, and he's still standing on the sideline next to the coach. And, and, and there are two things with that play. And you, I can understand, hey, Rico was a big part of both of those drives, okay? But Rico is a, still a flawed back, and he runs hard. He runs, as they say, like a bowling ball full of knives. But vision, decision-making are still parts of his game. He doesn't. He's not slow to the hole, fast through the hole. He does not make good decisions down there. And on that play, it was a pull by Zach Martin. You got Lipke leading block. He was supposed to go to the outside, follow his blockers, bounce it, go through the hole. He inexplicably cut back and then dove and got met by a linebacker in the middle of the hole and fumbled the ball. It was a plus 
He was graded down on that play because it was a horrible decision, not just the fumble, but his read and, and what he was doing. And again, the greatest he is, he doesn't. He's not a, as good at the goal line, red zone. Is Ezekiel Elliott? You got a guy that has a nose for the end zone. Why is he not on the field? Why is he active on game day if you're not going to have a role for him? The whole thing makes me wonder who wanted him in the organization and who doesn't want him in the organization. It sounds like Jerry wanted him and Mike don't. <laughs> That's what but, it sounds but like. But Mike has said glowing things on Monday. Oh, Zeke's been great hey, in the locker room. He's great in the practice. As long as he's not playing, he's great. <laughs> he said great things about Malik Davis, and they cut him, and cut yeah, him two what days you, later. What you so. say don't matter. It's yeah. what you do. Right. It, it makes no sense. And like I said, I talked to Dalvin. Not Yeah, Dalvin. We my cooks mixed up. But I talked to Dalvin yesterday, and he said my time has come. I'm still getting work with the first team. You know, it's funny because, you know, he again says – I was waiting on Tuesday to hear from Jerry. From Jerry, and just like typical media, Rico had a good day. There were no questions about Dalvin. What Cook do you, What do you think those two got? What do you think Cook and and Zeke talk about? What are the conversations like? like? like we're both playing behind this guy. You can't even get off the practice squad, and I can't get off the sideline because of Rico Dowdle. And, and, and before that, I was getting on the field after. Um, Deuce, Deuce Vaughn. Vaughn. <laughs> I mean, it makes no sense. It's yeah, crazy. I say. It sounds like to me, Mike has already told you what he thinks. He just hasn't verbalized. It. You've covered a lot of teams here where guys, you've seen guys come and go. And, and being a Buckeye guy, seeing Ezekiel Elliott work his magic there, come here, the NFL, set it on fire, and then to see him now where he is. I mean, Ed, we're talking about this in the locker room. It's just these – I mean, it's really not different than anybody else. He is a aging star in the NFL, and this game is not kind to aging stars. Unless you're Derrick Henry. <laughs> well, he's the same well, age as Derrick Henry. <laughs> well, I mean, aging star. Derrick Henry appears he's going to be like that Adrian Peterson outlier. But, you know, just whether it's Tony Dorsett, whether it's any of the great players you've seen who have aged horribly, Des Bryant was a great player for three years and fell off a cliff. Uh, only thing is, we didn't have to see see his demise up close and personal. I, you know, I, I'm still hurt. Why are you? Because I love Tony Dorsett. I was mad at Hershel Walker hey, when man. they brought Hershel in here taking my reps from my guy. <laughs> and then he went to Denver. And he, was he looked old. I, yeah, ooh, that, he looks old. Look like OJ in San Francisco. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> he looked you know, old in Denver. Franco in Seattle. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But those guys, <laughs> yeah. like when he was in New England last year, it was okay. Good. You don't have to suffer through this. Uh, but when you see it up close, man, it ain't no fun for him. But, but you know, I understand and I get that. And, again, as I said, no one in their right mind can claim that he should be getting more carries than Rico right now. No one said he should be out there between the 20s. But on the goal line. Situational football. Situational football, he ain't too old to get to the end zone. And he still is a hammer. He's still a load. He knows how to get to the end zone. He knows how to find creases, run through creases at the goal line. Didn't he do it in Cleveland week one? Yes. I mean, it makes no know. sense to, in my mind that you don't put him out there specifically, as they, as they say in the hood, specifically <laughs> for that situation. It is like, really? They say that in the hood? Yeah, they do. <laughs> Pacifically, we're on the West Coast. They'll, in San Francisco, he'll play because he'll be in the Pacific time zone. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he's that, that precise situation, he should be on the field. Makes no sense. I'm going to take a break. <laughs> Still can't I get on, you can't get on Pacific. <laughs> I was going to say something. I'm like, no, that would be being petty. I don't want to meet you where you're at. Uh, so, <laughs> really? let's talk about the left tackle, Tyler Guyton, as he gets ready to face the Ivory LT, Aiden Hutchinson. Is he coming here? Ivory LT? The Ivory LT. <laughs> that's, not heard that. that's, a, that's a newism. That's right. That's right. We'll do that next. Right here on the Media Match, Jacques Taylor, you got Ed Werder and All City Dallas, the most trusted man. After Walter Cronkite, uh, he is Clarence Hill. <laughs> he is specifically trusted. <laughs> I'm Dewey Scruggs, Media Match. <laughs> Back. Finds Pearson. It's caught. Touchdown. The Dallas Morning News delivers full press coverage of the Cowboys. Bateman straight drop. Throws it over the middle. Irvin. In Touchdown, Cowboys. We cover your Cowboys from the preseason to the postseason and beyond. Boot to the right. Looking down the field. Lamb. Victory. Game by game. Play by play. No one delivers your Cowboys like the Dallas Morning News. Oops. Connect deeper to the Dallas Cowboys with the Dallas Morning News. I'm Cowboys alumni, Danny McCray, here with Smoothie King asking, what's that sound? 
That's the sound of me sipping one of their Power Pack smoothies with over 10 grams of protein. With real fruits and organic veggies, because at Smoothie King, what you see is what you sip. So grab a delicious Smoothie King smoothie, throw a straw in your jaw, and get sipping real. Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection. Featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more, the bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. Hey, Cowboy fans, I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. But lately, I've been learning a new game, crypto. Sound confusing? Don't worry. Even us pros were rookies in crypto once. That's why I trust blockchain.com. They make crypto easy. No confusing jargon, just the tools to help you win. Prescott keeps it, slides with a first down. Invest like your icons, where everyone is a rookie in crypto with blockchain.com. Blockchain.com. Perfect throw, my goodness. Wow, did he ever thread the needle. Visit blockchain.com slash cowboys to get started. Back, back, back to back. Media Mash. Media Mash, brought to you by New One. I am Newey Scruggs here with Jacques Taylor. Sorry, <laughs> Michael. That's all right, babe. My, uh, Ed Warder's here. You got Clarence Hill, Mr. Trusted, and uh, I'm Newey Scruggs. So, Tyler Guyton, last time we saw him in Pittsburgh, left the field, was injured. He's back on the practice field. So what are we expecting Sunday? Jack? A couple holding penalties, a sack, and, uh, you know, a, you know, a struggle. I mean, that's what we've seen so far. I don't see any reason why it's going to change against one of the best players in the league. Um, you know, but I'm okay with it because I accept people for who they are and where they are. And you knew it was going to be a struggle when you signed them and drafted them. And so it is what it is. And you hope that by the end of the year, if they're still in playoff contention, he will be that dude or close to that dude or something like that dude or a dude. Because right now he's just a guy. Ed? It's pretty amazing the number of elite pass rushers this team has played. And even after Aiden Hutchinson this week, next week it's Nick Bosa. It just never seems to get any easier. And I think Hutchinson, unlike T.J. Watt, moves side to side a little bit more. I think he'll play – two-thirds of his snaps over the right tackle, which would be Terrence Steele, and then a third, the other third would be over the rookie, Guyton, assuming he plays. Um, yeah, I mean, he, the guy has already had his bye, so he sat out a week, and he still leads the NFL in every pressures, quarterback hits, sacks. This is, the, this is arguably, on turf, the best guy they're going to play. Well, he's a menace now. He is a menace. They disruptive. I, I think it's interesting, and, and you guys are all right about the way Guyton has played. But I would say that going back to week one when he played the, for, the, defend, the, defend, the reigning defensive player of the year, uh, the Giants are a pretty good pass rushers as well. Last week they had T.J. Bass. Those pass rushers have not wrecked the game. Now, he's he has not been great. I think that's a credit to the protection plans right. that the right. coaches have come up with, right? right? To help whoever it is that needs help, whether it's BB against the right. Giants inside or it's, or and, it's. And we talked to Mike after the game Sunday, and you know Steelers have the highest paid defense in the league, and they have T.J. Watt, and they have some great defenders. And as he was managing the game, certainly that final drive, you know, it was deliberate. They never have any doubt they were going to score, you know. And, they, and Guyton was out, and they got. Um, Tyler Smith left tackle, and they got a backup left guard. They never had any doubt that they are going to score, but his play calls were deliberate with protection in mind. Protection in mind. You know, you look at even on the screen pass, you know, you got somebody chipping there. You know, Ferguson, they're all chipping there. were chipping and watch. So I think that they're going to have a plan as much as they can for Hutchinson. Of course, everybody try to do, try to do that every week, but the Cowboys yeah. have been able to at least move the ball you know, I don't think that their lack of things that no, they've done is because they couldn't yeah. move the ball. The, the, those rushers, certainly getting back behind in Baltimore and in the Saints game had nothing to do with, with the failures of the pass block. No, to me. but when you have Tyler Guyton, as we've seen him thus far, and he has these holding penalties, these other mistakes, they wreck drives because they they're have it. they not explosive on offense. And the problem with playing left tackle is, and we've heard this before, he could play great for 57 snaps. Yes, he gave up two sacks and a holding penalty. 
So we focus on them three bad plays. No, no, no. Whereas, no. you know, somebody else can have a bad play. It's not as... It's, uh, no, no, I, I was just giving you ways that they can still move the ball, and, and people have uh, moved the ball on, and they moved the ball successfully like was, outside those three players of Dak. They moved the ball up and down the field against a very good Steelers defense. We can say we well, want about the Steelers offense, but they moved the ball up and down the field in the Steelers defense. And as great as Hutchinson yeah. is, the best part of the Lions team is that offense with those running backs, those receivers, and that tight end, that close. offensive line. So p- plays can be made on that defense is all I'm saying. They can move the ball on that defense. I think the thing that's been missing from this Cowboys team and its ability, what, the two, two of the last three years they've led the NFL in scoring, they're not getting opportunities from their defense. Their defense isn't scoring right. points no off turnovers. turnovers, and they're not getting turnovers and creating short fields for the offense. The offense is having to drive the ball much longer than they have in recent years. And guess who might be back? Deron Bland. Deron Bland. And the you'd man. rather say Micah Parsons. Yeah. But <laughs> you rather say Deron Bland. You'd but. rather say Micah. We'd rather have them both. But if you had to pick one, he, I, if you had to pick one, you probably want to. But at least you get one. But. You, guy who but, scored five but, touchdowns but, on defense, yeah, yeah, I'll take that. Right, you talked about the turnovers. That's what I'm saying. You, you, a guy that turned the ball over like nobody's business, and you look at he and Diggs together, who have had more turnovers, interceptions than any duo in the league of the last three seasons. You get it, and they never played together. Never played together. That's crazy. But they'll finally get on the field together. He may not be the whole game, but he practiced full yesterday. Uh, I'm trying to see what he practiced today. I know Mike McCarthy said it was going to be big for he him. He was out there for sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, he I haven't got to be on the pitch count. I, I haven't so. gotten to practice, but he won't be on the pitch count. But with this receiving court, all hands on deck. If he play, if you get him for 20 plays, and I was I talked to this morning, yeah. say say he plays 20 plays. Now we're in the fourth quarter. It's My, third down. You think they're taking him off the field? Now they're going to play 22. <laughs> <laughs> you think so, they're going to take him off the field? <laughs> so stay there. Um, Lions averaging 26 a game, seventh in the league when it comes to that. And their uh, passing offense, 245 uh, a game. That's seventh in the uh, seventh in the NFL on, on offense right there. So The goal has to be to hold them under the average. I think 24 is a good number if you can hold them to that. If Zimmer holds this offense under 24, he's done a damn good job. Without Michael Parsons, That's what I'm saying, if yeah. he holds this offense Marcus under Marcus Lawrence, without Marcus Lawrence, without Needland, you know, you got to add all of that in there. If he holds this offense, because <laughs> the thing about this offense is not just they're great, they're explosive. They got, they, they're explosive passing and running. Yes, because Jamar, uh, Aaron, what's his name, can take it? Gibbs. 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 The thing you can't let Jared Goff do is you can't let him be a play action passer. Yeah, if the running game's involved, he's lethal. We saw it last week. He went 18 for 18. And the one pass he didn't complete, he caught for a touchdown. <laughs> like it, it was a ridiculous performance by a quarterback. Yeah, and, and, and I listen, I would say all day that Dak is a better quarterback than Goff. Than the guy who was taken number one overall in his draft. You don't think he, he remembers that every single time yeah, he plays the line? But Goff. And Dak is five but against the line. But but golf in this situation with this offense, you know, um, they got the answer to the test. They got a great offense coordinator. Yeah. They got two, two backs that they use interchangeably. They got great offensive line. Great offensive line. They got an explosive great receiver. They got a great tight end. <laughs> it's like, what do you want? I mean, it's what the and, Cowboys used and, to be. And, and, you know, the thing that the thing that, that golf when he struggles is when he gets pressure. But if he's back there, play action pass enough pressure, this guy is going going to be great. If you force him to be a drop back guy with no threat of the running game, he's a whole different guy. He's totally yeah. vulnerable. But if he can play action pass you and use the run game, yeah. it's tough. Huh? Which is, you know, that's what I said. If you can hold him to twenty four. Zimmer's you have a, a shot. Zimmer's done a great job. Got to get some turnovers. Yeah, which is why I say Brad, Brad Holmes, our general manager, deserves a lot of credit because no. he recognizes this is what my quarterback is. Let's build around what my quarterback does best. Imagine and that. I remember when they made that trade. Yes. I remember when they made. That. I remember when they made that trade. I mean, I don't know that slammed it, everybody. Yeah. Everybody slammed it. Like, what is he doing? Going to get he trading this guy to that guy, and then Rams Goff is just seen as a throw-in. Right, yeah, he's just a temporary guy to yeah. make a draft a first round quarterback. Right, he was. They were supposed to draft a quarterback. You're right. He was not supposed to be in their future, <laughs> but they built around him, and that's what you know. You build around him, got players around him, you can make guys look good. I mean, you know, and credit think, for him. And I think they're trying to issue a statement now. They ain't never done nothing. They're a hungry team. Oh, no doubt. They're mad about last year, but just like anybody, they're on national TV against the Cowboys. A four o'clock game, um, three o'clock here. Um, Tom Brady. They're ready to let the world know that they are the best team in the NFC. I think they are playing the best. I mean, I know in Minnesota's undefeated, but I think they're the best team in the NFC right now, and they want to let everybody know they're ready to, to, to take that mantle. 
It's going to be interesting to see how Green Bay and Detroit fight this thing out. In the Minnesota? And you forgot five about and <laughs> You don't believe in the quarterback. No, he man. don't believe in the quarterback. He what about the defense, though? Brian Flores 20 got sacks, 10 picks already. He got One of the very few teams in the history of the NFL to do that this early. You know what? Not my ass. That's why you're a Hall of Fame. And if Brett, and if, Brett Fra- you a Hall and if Aaron Rodgers was better, they would have beat him last week. Okay, but he wouldn't. He wouldn't. So if some butts and candy and nuts. And Robert saw the test here. Aaron Rodgers was a little better. Don't throw three picks and miss a wide open receiver in the fourth quarter. That would have sealed the game. Well, Robert Sala would be working this week, but but he's not. <laughs> he would be. Sala didn't call good plays on offense. Oh, he didn't do that. They fired his boy. This and guy. then they yeah. fired his boy after. Which well, they what didn't he fire him. They stripped him of his yeah. play calling I mean, responsibility. He's still on the staff. Still, he's still working with Aaron. <laughs> he's still working. He's still working with Aaron. Aaron insisted on that, but he had nothing to do with it all. helping lies. Damn lies, 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 and damn lies. <laughs> Let's take a break. <laughs> Our final break, meeting match. We also got some games to pick here. Um, Jacques Taylor, Ed Werder, he is Clarence Hill. I'm Newey Scruggs. This is DallasCowboys.com Radio. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. Raising Cane's presents the other rules of football. Rule one, any broadcast without the express edition of Cook to Order Cane's Chicken Fingers is prohibited. Rule 12, no crinkle cut fries, Texas toast, or craveable cane sauce constitutes an illegal formation. And rule 31, anybody who loves to feed their game face is an eligible receiver of Cane's. When it comes to winning game day, Cane's rules. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love, go Cowboys. Back. Finds Pearson. It's caught. Touchdown. The Dallas Morning News delivers full press coverage of the Cowboys. Bateman straight drop. Throws it over the middle. Irvin in for the touchdown, Cowboys. We cover your Cowboys from the preseason to the postseason and beyond. Boot to the right. Looking down the field. Lamb. Victory. Game by game. Play by play. No one delivers your Cowboys like the Dallas Morning News. Oops. Connect deeper to the Dallas Cowboys with the Dallas Morning News. Hey, Cowboy fans, I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. But lately, I've been learning a new game, crypto. Sound confusing? Don't worry. Even us pros were rookies in crypto once. That's why I trust blockchain.com. They make crypto easy. No confusing jargon, just the tools to help you win. Prescott keeps it, slides with a first down. Invest like your icons, where everyone is a rookie in crypto with blockchain.com. Perfect throw, my goodness. Wow, did he ever thread the needle. Visit blockchain.com slash cowboy to get started. Back, back, back to back. Media Mash. Media Mash. Brought to you by nobody. Jock Taylor, Ed Werner, <laughs> Newey Scruggs, and uh, Clarence Hill. So you got the media, uh, the uh, injury report. report there. Injury report. What you got there? Chill. Well, two, two things that just jump off the page at you. Um, Trevon Diggs did not practice because he was had an illness. Um, That's Marquise Bill. Ain't it? No, Trevon Diggs, sir. Bell was yesterday with an illness. Yes, yeah, sir. Let me read this. All right, I'm sorry, man. I mean, he called my he's name. Trust, he's he called trusty guy. See, that's why I'm trusty right trusty. there. Can we question the trusty guy? <laughs> anyway. Um, God have mercy, Jesus. Eric Kendricks did not practice for a second straight day, calf shoulder, which is alarming because he is your middle linebacker. Um, green dot man. The green dot man. Uh, and the backup green dot guy, the backup middle linebacker, Nick Vigil, also did not practice because of foot injury. Uh, and Zach Martin, Pro Bowl guard, uh, he didn't practice on Wednesday because it was rest day. He didn't practice on today because of a back injury. Old guys and back injuries. How he hurt his back on the day off? He is probably already hurt. <laughs> Let's not speculate on <laughs> how that might have happened. <laughs> probably, probably, probably already hurt. But uh, uh, Hooker did practice. Uh, Don't talk about hookers and then back injuries. Oh my God, Jerry Jones! You got a little Jerry Jones in you right now. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little Jerry Jones in you. But yeah, if, if you know, we're, if Martin, you know, back injuries. You hopefully he'll get to go tomorrow, but uh, that that's not good, you know. And and then you know, uh, Diggs, I think he'll be fine. You know, he had the ankle last week. Uh, illness 
could be like Bell is back after being ill yesterday. Maybe something going on in the defense back room, but uh, he should be okay. So your left tackle, not on the injury report, but coming off last week dealing with a knee, and then your Hall of Fame uh, right guard, Zach Martin, dealing with a back issue here. So something to look out for. And Bland was full again today. Second straight day was full. Yesterday was more of a light practice. Today was real practice. No setbacks. Think they for, Bland. for the after the bye, or they play him? What's your guess? Bland? Yeah. Oh, he's playing. He's playing. He's playing. No, you have to play. Coach Jones said that. No, radio. no, it wasn't. That's the funny part. Um, it wasn't Coach Jones. It was Steven. It was Steven. Junior. Steven, little, Steven little, told Steven to some, uh, some uh, a group of uh, sponsors that Bland was playing. <laughs> and we and it's funny because we asked Mike about this yesterday, and Mike was like, can we just let him practice first? Why do we have to be talking about this kind of stuff? So it wasn't Coach Jones. He's been Jerry eyes, but he hasn't been Steven eyes. <laughs> it apparently. wasn't Jerry. It was Steven was talking to the sponsors. <laughs> Who told the sponsors that Bland was going to play? And like I said, my initial thoughts like, why would you play a guy? You got to buy next week. He's coming off the injury. You know, if he's going to be limited because he's going to play him on limited basis, why would you play him on limited basis if not good to go? Especially with so many other injuries and and the game they roster spot at such a premium because you have so many other guys you got to fill in for. But then you think about it. Uh, he's healthy. He's been ready to go. Uh, it was a four to six week injury going back to training camp. He's, you know, Britain's not going to let him get back if he's not fully healthy and ready to go and can do everything. Uh, he's probably going to be limited because of the conditioning issue. But going against this offense with yeah. those receivers, I have no choice. Really. You need well, you need all hands on deck. Yeah. You you need if your you cornerback. Play, you need your best go. cornerbacks out there, even for twenty plays. And like, as I said, we may have you out there for twenty plays or twenty five plays. But fourth quarter, third and seven, I need to get the ball off the field. I'm leaving him out there. I'm not going to leave him like those pitchers. He can only – guys are going to no hitters. He got a no hitter, but I, I'm i sorry. He can only pitch 80, 90 – That's analytical. 90 pitches. That's, that's analytical. 90 pitches. Get, take him out. That's, that's yeah. analytical community. We say that doesn't affect the NFL too much here. Uh, when it comes to playing playing guys and needing a win. The Cowboys are huge on analytics. <laughs> they have a huge <laughs> analytics staff. Uh, can analytics uh, help them win a home game? Something that hasn't happened in calendar year of 2024? Happened eight times last year. They were the only that, team to win all their home games last year in the regular season, and now they've lost three straight, including the playoff. Yeah. Mojo is gone. Last two years combined, actually. Why a is 16 it? 16-game home winning streak. You would think this team is built to win in that building, to be a, play in a speed game, but I feel like the Lions are more equipped to win a speed yeah. game. Oh, they got, they got big play. They got more speed, for sure. You know, it's funny, though. If the teams the Cowboys played on the road, they played them at home. They be three zero at home. The teams the Cowboys played at home, been on the road, they be zero two on the road. Now we're like, oh, they're great on the road. Yeah, go to go to go to Baltimore, go to New Orleans. You think they they be zero two on the road? The Giants, Cleveland, Pittsburgh come here, they be three zero at home. I think it had, the schedule makes a difference too. And that's why this game's interesting because we can see what they're all about. Because um, I haven't seen anything that make me dissuade that they're not a six and eleven team. I don't wow. think this team tells us that we see what they're all about. This game six and eleven. I don't think this game tells us we're gonna see what they're all about. Without Michael you'll Parsons, you'll feel differently about them if they beat the Lions. Yeah. Oh, if they're four and two at the break, if, you'll if, feel if different than if they're three if and three. If it's a uh, if it's a hell of a performance and they lose at the buzzer, I'll feel differently. But they got a whole lot of holes, man. Right. And, um, I haven't seen anything. This is the kind of team. I, they don't I, do a I, lot I, of things well. Like, what do they do? What is what is their offensive identity? Actually, I think we learn more about them after the bye. Win or lose this week, and I think they have a better chance of beating San Francisco than beating the Lions. Let's this, be honest about this. This, this, time, this time last week, when we were watching the Thursday night game, when I was watching Atlanta and Tampa Bay, I was like, uh-oh, there's two more teams the Cowboys can't beat. No, no, I agree. <laughs> but but at least you know those are competitive teams. But I'm just saying we'll learn more about this. You know, I, I think that with, with still without Demarcus Lawrence and without Michael Parsons, this is a tough road to hold, really tough to a, really make a – any kind of grand conclusions about this team. But after the bye, Mike, he was on the course today. Bill Parcell said when they get on the course, it's not going to be long. Not going to be long. <laughs> when you get on the, you see him on the course, it's not going to be long. Barely that's why he's. <laughs> no, but he's on the course. That's, that's, that's part of the rehab. He got two more weeks now. But, you know, yeah, the he, injuries and the stuff is why I feel the way I feel. And the fact that they, like, literally, what is it that they do well? They don't run the ball they, well. They, they, they kick, don't rush they, the they pass kick, well. They, kick field they don't get goals. the ball to the number one receiver they in the second kick, half. They kick field goals like nobody's business. <laughs> they, got one of, they, they missed one of those last week. You know, and the problem is they don't do anything yeah, the week before. you can count on. Like They yeah. don't go into a game saying, oh, whatever all this fails, we're going to do this. No, They that, don't do nothing, That's what man. I'm saying is that after the battle, when you get your guys back and they start, you know, gelling, I think, I think they improved. I think the offense has a chance to continue to get better. 
they showed signs of life even against Pittsburgh. After the bye, that's where it's going to come down. You got after San Francisco, I think it's based on the way the San Francisco is playing right now. This winnable game, they can finally get over that hump. You got Philadelphia and you got Atlanta. We'll learn more about this team after the bye than we do Sunday. All right. Um, we have Thursday night football. The San Francisco 49ers, who lost to the Arizona Cardinals at home last week, will face Seattle in Seattle. Seattle got beat by the Giants at home last week. Jock, where are you going? Oh, I think uh, I think Detroit rolls, man. Thursday no, no, no. Night. can oh, you listen? Thursday night football. Thursday night football. <laughs> Tonight. I'm sorry, man. I'm focused on Sunday, man. 49ers. He said Seahawks. he literally said Thursday night football. And while he was saying that, I was, thinking about, I was thinking about Sunday. Literally. Hey, man, I'm a distractible player sometimes. <laughs> Another parcel is. That's, that's why I threw it out there. <laughs> Who's playing? Focus. Satellite player. <laughs> Who's playing? Focus, focus, man. Who's your focus? Focus. And normally you don't come to me first. So I was really. I was San really. Francisco. Oh, uh, yeah. Is at Seattle. Oh. They tonight, play in the NFC West. Tonight. Tonight? Thursday night football. Oh. No, uh, man. While you at Clarence's place, you're going to watch it. Yeah, that's another story. Uh, I think in a game like that, after Seattle took that L, give me uh, San Francisco. I don't trust Seattle. Even though San Francisco is missing all their dudes. <laughs> I'll take San Francisco, even without Christian McCaffrey. Geno Smith is 0-3 against the 49ers. 49ers are due to win a division game, a conference game. Often slow starters under Kyle Shanahan. I think they'll go to Seattle and win this game. All right. Well, I'm going the opposite. I'm going to Seattle. I think San Francisco has real problems. and They're not scoring. They didn't score in the second half. I, I think Seattle is, has you know been a better team, although they lost to the Giants last week. I think Seattle wins this game. Look, right. look at who they beat their first three games, Seattle's first three games. By the way, last week. Um, Larry Curley and Mo. Last week. Uh, uh, the media mash. You uh, you you pick Tampa, Ed. You pick Tampa. I had it going for a while too. Who did I pick last week? Clarence picked Atlanta. Exactly. To win twenty to seventeen. All right, let's get here to the Cowboys. Uh, you going? I to- think I picked the Lions roll. <laughs> <laughs> You've already score. picked this game. <laughs> Give me a score. Thirty four nineteen. Wow. Thirty four nineteen. Okay, Ed, what you got? Cowboys last home win against the Lions. Mm-hmm. One more thing. The Lions are 1-1-1 one, one, and one coming out of their bye, as they are now under Dan Campbell. They're 1-1-1. One, one, and one. The loss was to Dallas. Mike McCarthy is 3-0 and oh against opponents coming off their bye. I'll take the Cowboys in this Ooh, game. Let's go, let's go whoa, score. Whoa, yeah. whoa. Let me have a uh, – Cowboys are – Give me a 30-27. Whoa! Hey, that, Thirty yeah. to twenty-seven. Look I'd be that. impressed by that. I would be impressed by that too. I'm, I'm picking the Lions. Um, Thirty twenty-four. Thirty to twenty-four. Now, last week mm. against the Steelers, Jock, you went Pittsburgh nineteen seventeen. I was in the ballpark, man. No, you weren't. You, Ed, weren't. you, you lost. Ed, you went Pittsburgh fourteen ten. Mm. Clarence, I had, I had a Geno Smith week. <laughs> Clarence took Dallas to win twenty to seventeen. Jeez. What was the final score? Twenty-seven. Please, most trusted man on the field. Man, I'm yeah. gonna have to make that door you bigger. You know, this client that, had three that, turnovers. Listen, listen, that was leading up. To listen, it. listen. That's trust, right there. Listen, Ed. that's trust. A mighty poor dog won't wag his own tail. Okay. <laughs> A what? <laughs> A mighty poor dog won't wag his own tail, man. Come on. <laughs> well, you gonna be ready to walk around South Dallas by the time the show's over? I'm gonna go to barbershop after this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You gonna, gonna be able to educate <laughs> Satan Steele? <laughs> hey, here's boy. boy. Let me ask you this. Woo! To yeah. all y'all, we'll, we'll, uh, I'm glad to know you're too. reading my Twitter. <laughs> I'm listening to you. You don't know Are about you that? listening to me? You don't know about that? JJT. Somebody, somebody yeah. Will to a to tackle us score a touchdown? <laughs> what? Will a tackle score a touchdown? <laughs> <laughs> no, or a two-point conversion. The tackle is, but will, will Detroit try to fool the Cowboys and fool officials again? I bet they will. No. No. Uh, all right, gentlemen, this was fun as always. Clarence Hill, Ed Word, Jacques Taylor. I'm Dewey Scott. This is the Media Match on DallasCowboys.com. <laughs> this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?